Welcome to the Evolution Show. I'm Johan Landgren. I hope you're great. Today is part two of my conversation with Niklas Dahl, the leader behind Alpha Wall Oceanbird, a joint venture developing the world's largest sailing ship for freight. A 200 meter long and 40 meter wide sailing vessel propelled by a remarkable wing sail technology that may transform the whole shipping industry and that is to be ready already in 2026. In this episode, we look into the future of shipping on the sea with sails and other technologies and what challenges and opportunities this comes with to make the transition to a fossil free transport system. I hope you liked the episode and if you do, don't forget, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. As always, stay ahead of the curve and stay electric. This is the Evolution Show. Welcome back, Niklas Dahl, to the Evolution Show. Thank you. In the previous episode, we talked about the real exciting Oceanbird project or uh, Oceanbird Alpha Wall uh, that you are uh, the manager, uh, managing director of. And uh, today we're going to focus on um, the ship, uh, not, not on the ship, but on the more broader aspect of oceanic shipping. So both what you can do with the ocean bird, uh, but also other alternatives. But when people think about sailing ships today, they probably think about smaller ve vessels of recreation or sailing competitions, for example. But uh, at Alpha Wall Ocean Bird, you're developing a wing sail technology that will be built for a 200 meter long and 40 meter wide huge sailing ship that will carry up to 7000 cars using almost only the wind. But as mind blowing as this is, uh, many probably wonder why not uh, carry other goods uh, and people as well. So my first question is, uh, could you roll out uh, other ships like passenger ships, for example? Yes, I mean, this is what we really need to do in order to change the, the shipping industry. So we need to also to get it on board tankers, passenger ships and, and so on. So that, that's fully possible um, to do. Yeah. And uh, you talked to, to me earlier on about the differences. I mean, can you explain why is it diff difficult? What's the challenges by using the wind instead of the conventional, let's say, diesel uh, propelled um, vehicles or ships we have today? Well, every ship type have different demands or different uh, way of looking at things. So, I mean, if you take a, a car carrier, they're quite high. So there you normally have more problem with stability. So you need to really look into how do you handle those kind of things. If you look into a bulk vessel or a tanker, they are normally very, very stable. So, but they have other demands on how do you handle the cargo when you take down the, the, the sails. And then of course, I mean, what everyone would like to see also is these on, on container vessels. But then you have the challenging of how do you put them down and be able to take up containers and, and, and design for that. Um, and also looking into this, you have, if for a tanker or for a bulk vessel, you normally have the bridge at the back. So this is also something you need to handle. How do you handle line of sight um, for, for this part? And that could also be a very interesting. I mean, what is the reason why you have the, the, the bridge at the back? Because that's traditional how they look. In the future, maybe we will see they move to the front. And that's exactly what you've seen on the container vessels. Today, the latest Maersk uh, vessels, they have the bridge at the front because of the line of sight. So there are a lot of things that you can do in this also to, to make the wings even more effective um, um, for, the, for the future. Yeah, and we talked about it a little bit earlier uh, that you could rebuild ships as well. So yeah, th uh, there is a huge potential for, for this technology. Uh, I would like to continue a little bit uh, with a quote I uh, found re recently that I think is uh, relevant here as well. And uh, it's the CEO of um, Einride, Robert Falk, um, the founder of Einride, a Swedish company as well, and that they're developing a self-driving electric truck. And uh, he recently said, and I quote, um, we need to stop subsidizing the old system. New technology will change the world, but the world is still subsidizing the existing system. 
And I think this is true for most of the shipbuilders today as well. And they roll out of, we still roll out old infrastructure and still invest in new technologies that are not sailing ships, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So how do you view this challenge? What, what do you need to do and what would you like to see uh, to accelerate the change? I think there are, there are coming new legislation into this that will drive it in, in, in that way. Most probably there will be a CO2 tax in, in the future that will drive this even further in that way. But I think what, what's important when it comes, when it's dri driven by legislation and these parts is also that there is an available technology. So, I mean, now there are available technology to handle these kind of things and to take those steps. So, so that is what we want to have recognized and then, then um, we will show that the, um, in the future. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's also kind of interesting to compare to the auto industry. Uh, most of the current uh, large ship developers, they focus on um, diesel engines or other fossil driven propelling technologies. So how can we push them in a different direction, do you think? Yeah, again, I mean, I think for when, when it comes to sustainability and I mean, if you're not just looking at it from a legislation point of view, I think we as a company, we have also the, the have to show how attractive it is. It should be a win-win situation if it's going to be really a true uh, success in that way. So it must be something in for the for the ship owner, and it must be something in for 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 us in that way to to do it. So so looking into that, I mean, there are a lot of things with wind where you will get the benefit since it's then free of charge. You don't need infrastructure for for uh, using wind in the future, and also then the concern about what are the future prices of, of uh, new fuels and these things. Something we didn't mention in the previous episode, we looked more specifically at the ocean, uh, ocean bird technology, wind sail technology, is that what happens, for example, when you cross the Atlantic with this sailing technology, and let's say that uh, there is not enough wind for some reason, there's a storm where you have to fold down the sails. Uh, will, uh, how do you handle a situation like that? I mean, we will have we have warning systems in, in this, so you will see before you come into a storm and then you fold them down when it's safe. So we are sailing them up to 22.5 meter, uh, meter per second in wind. And if we go above that, then we fold them down for, for, for those reasons. Uh, also, as you say, if there is no wind, there's no point of having them up. So then you take them down. And all these ships that we have, they will also need a different propulsion. Uh, and that can, of course, vary. And I think this is what makes it really interesting to combine new things also. I mean, you have batteries, you have uh, a lot of things with, with methanol, ammonia and so on. And if you then can combine that with the wind part, it makes it less risky. You don't put all the eggs in one basket um, and you will reach much, much more. Yeah, and that, perfect that you said that because my next question is all combining alternative technologies. And as you said, the men you mentioned the batteries. Uh, we had another uh, interesting company here at the Evolution Show, uh, the CEO of Ecandia, um, Magnus Eriksson. He, he, they are developing a Swedish company, developing very reliable um, naval batteries. So uh, batteries that can be used in everything from tugboats and uh, smaller passenger ferries. Um, but also larger naval vessels now uh, are uh, ordering this technology. So how do you see, you mentioned a little bit, but could you see, um, let's say, a larger battery storage units uh, on the ship? Uh, I, I guess it won't be sufficient to only have that as a backup, but maybe combining alternative fuels, at least for now. I mean, as an alternative, I mean, that, that could definitely, and as a backup, as a smaller part of it, uh, it's still so much power you need for, for a larger ship. So that's why, I mean, when you look into this with the battery driven, it's normally small ferries and, and so on. Uh, but but in, in general, I, I don't think there is one silver bullet that will fix all the environmental problem. Uh, different ship type di needs different types of solution. This is one of them. Uh, if you have very small uh, routes and uh, close to the coast, then maybe the wind is not the best solution for it. Then you need other things and, and to do this in combination and, and work. And then you also learn a lot of things. I'm, I'm sure that this is the development area. You will see a lot of things happening for the next five, 10 years. Yeah, and I just came to think about tugboats and other, I mean, if you have a large vessel like yours coming into harbor, you could either have a battery energy or a battery storage uh, uh, on board, or you can have other ships helping you you know, getting you to, to kind of 
your uh, your spot in the harbor uh, that will just be, be a huge leap forward by itself i yep. mean yeah uh, okay uh, then of course um we can move on um what do you think about uh, the shipping industry changing uh, with more renewables uh, I, i'm thinking about let's say that we we go we continue this path we're on right now but it also leads to more local production of goods and services so kind of in a way changes the way the products we use that we ship so we we go to certain products we ship more and we sh we ship let's say groceries food production less uh, that I think it would be a benefit uh, for the sailing ships. You don't have to ship uh, the goods so fast. Maybe you mentioned that we can. You need to go down a little bit in speed in order to make it economic or energy-wise for the shipping for the ships. So, how do you see uh, the shipping industry with that in mind? How, how do you see the the sailing industry or your kind of technology benefiting from that, or, or perhaps the challenges? Yeah, no, but when, when you go down in speed, you will, of course, have more savings in, in that way. So it's more a question of how much savings do you want to have? So if you still want to continue on uh, high speed, it's still possible to do that also with wing sails, but you will save less. Uh, and it's the same thing with the convention engine today. I mean, it, it goes a lot more when you when you increase the speed, you will have a lot more pollution in that way. Uh, so, so I, for for me, it's more a question of how do we handle logistic? How do we look into that? Can we can we think differently than we do today? And this has also been a part of this uh, Ocean Bird research program that that was doing, looking into also for the car industry. Then, uh, can we think in different ways on on how to ship? Uh, do you need to have it exactly on that time, or or can we do it in yeah differently? So I think there will also be. A lot of things going in for that with the, in the future as well, um, and and there is so much we can do there. Uh, but that has not been really the, the the question in the past. But now, when you start to see the high prices on on fuel, you start to have all of this sustainability coming into play a lot more. Then suddenly it becomes also interesting to change behavior and change the way we're thinking. Yes, and I think uh, I think you're spot on there. I totally agree. I, I also think that uh, many people might think that we have din done things in a certain way for a long time, and that making this paradigm sh shift is either impossible or very challenging. But I always kind of go back to, in my case, I like Leonardo da Vinci, but you can have other other inspirations. But uh, for me, he was uh, very uh, ahead of his time, and part of his what was that he always said. Who kind of had this approach that he t took a blank sheet of paper and said like okay uh, how can i do this uh, does it you know challenge uh, the laws of physics no it doesn't um, why shouldn't i be able to do it differently and i think we should bear that in mind when we think about shipping industry as well that if you have a really open mind to things and think that we maybe we don't have to do it either we can't do it the same because we don't have the fossil energy mm -hmm. but also that we can do something new that it's it's better so with an open mind, my question comes down to how do you look into the future, let's say five, 10 years from now, having this open mind, as I know that you have, but how do you see going forward? No, but I think a lot of ships will use the wind in, in, in many different ways. Uh, that, that I would say, so to see the wing sails on more both existing ships and, and this, that, that's definitely one thing I, I, I see as a, as a great potential for everyone because it's both a good business case um, and it's also very sustainable in that way. So, so that's the, the big portion. Then when you look into the whole part, then we, I, I'm sure there will be new thinking of logistic wise, there will be new thinking of how do we route ships and how do we do this kind of thing. So, but this is the exciting part of it, as you say, also when you start with the blank paper, you start to challenge all of this. It's also learning. I mean, you will always think of new things going forward. Um, so when you come to step a, uh, to the first step, then you will have new technology available. You will have new insights. We can do this a little bit better and so on. And that will develop. And I think that's quite natural um, with all parts. I mean, everything comes from, if I take Alfa Laval as an example, we have done the separators for, for 100 years over that and they are still developing and they are still getting more and more efficient um, and I'm sure that that will be the case also with 
wings and, and, and shipping. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the Ocean Bird project uh, is a huge undertaking, taking, both in terms of technology and, and also, of course, financially. So naturally, uh, since I'm an investor in non-listed companies primarily, uh, for anybody interested in perhaps even investing in the Ocean Bird project, could you tell us about that? Is it possible? I mean, <clears throat> Ocean Bird is, is owned by Alfa Laval and Valenius. So the closest you get is to buy stocks in, in, in Alfa Laval because Valenius is not a, a stock uh, company in that way. But, but in, in principle, there is no way. I mean, we have a fully committed owners that has um, a long term vision on, on this, and uh, which is also for me very, very nice because we, we see that the long term commitment for this. Also, we had a joint venture before with Ballast Water, uh, or we still have, with Valenius and Alfa Laval. And I was starting up that in 2004, and I think we, that took off like 2010, 2011. So it also shows that the owners, they are there for long term and, and uh, also very financial strong. And I think this is one thing that's also very, very important for, for our customers, because you don't want to risk a lot of things with, with putting on a wing sale and then the company will go in bankruptcy in, in, in two years or three years because then your product becomes useless. So to have this really future proof, have strong mothers who can do that and also to have the whole service network around it. Um, I think that's one thing that is really, really appealing with, with the Ocean Bird as a, as a concept. Yes, and I think, uh, as you said, it's, this is a long-term investment and project. You need to have stable owners and people with, uh, you know, uh, I won't mention politicians, but they mm -hmm. don't have this kind of view, mostly, unfortunately. Okay, but uh, I finish off uh, like I did uh, in the previous episode. So for people uh, feeling exciting and inspired, inspired as I am about the Ocean Bird vessel, how can people follow and learn more about the Ocean Bird project? Yeah, uh, I mean, we are on many platforms and, and uh, so, so you have all the possibility to follow us on, on our webpage, uh, theoceanbird.com. Uh, also on LinkedIn, on uh, YouTube, we have a lot of things. And we want to be as transparent as possible and, and create engagement, I mean, and, and also create engagement from, from people who, who are really the best in the industry. So you're more than welcome to follow us on, on that and or contact us. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Niklas, for coming to the Evolution Show. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I think uh, I get inspired and uh, hopeful for the future. We need this kind of progress with, that you're doing and making with uh, the sailing vessels. Uh, this is an industry that needs to change, much like you know the road freight, uh, the shipping industry must change. I think it's about 3% of the global carbon emissions. So it's a huge impact you can make there. So again, thank you so much, Niklas. Thank you. I hope you liked today's conversation and got some inspiration for the future of oceanic freight. I definitely got some hope that we can turn even huge ships for freight into fossil-free sailing ships. And I'm curious what you think. Where do you see the oceanic shipping going in the future? What do you think about ocean bird wing sails? And what about alternative technologies? Tell me in the comments below and I will look into it. And perhaps I can invite somebody working with the technology. Next up on the Evolution Show, I have some really exciting news about the world-leading electric plane developer, Hort Aerospace, a company that I've invested in. I've been invited to visit the company's hangar and headquarters in Gothenburg to hear about some really exciting developments. So stick around for that. And before you go, if you want to support what we do on the Evolution Show, we really appreciate a thumbs up, and consider subscribing. As always, stay ahead of the curve and stay electric. I hope to see you next time.